Now then, so the last video that I did, I went over all 14 legendaries that you could get from the main story bosses. Those legendaries were unique to them, we went over them, showed them off and basically spoke about how good they were. Well actually this week, you'll be able to get a little bit more. Gearbox is celebrating 10 years of Borderlands with a 5 week event in Borderlands featuring a ton of rewards. This week, it's the boss week. And with it, each of the main story bosses in the game drop the uniques that we went over in the last video, but also some other weapons that you have more of a chance of getting. So we're doing a similar thing here, going through each of the bosses, talking about their new unique legendary that they'll be dropping for a week, basically asking if it's worth getting it. The majority of these have been world drops, but there are two new legendaries, kind of, that I will highlight in this video too. Before we get started, I did want to sort of talk about the elephant in the room when it comes to the drop rate. It's very, very weird. A lot of people that I've seen have been speaking about these drops, playing it on Mayhem 3, and they were saying the chance of some of these unique legendaries dropping was very, very slim. Now, from what I've heard from a couple of other people, including Killer6, is that Mayhem modifiers don't affect the drop chance of uniques, meaning that if you're looking for, let's say, the Gatling Gun from Mouthpiece, which we'll go over in a second, you have just as much chance of getting it on Mayhem 1 as you do on Mayhem 3. Even true Vault Hunter mode, where everything scales to you. But having it on Mayhem level 3 doesn't increase the drop chance at all all in comparison to Mayhem level 1. That's what a few people have said. It doesn't make any sense why that's the case. It just seems that Mayhem modifiers only increase the chance of world drops dropping. So if you just want random legendaries to drop all the time, go for it. But if you want these specific weapons, just leave it on Mayhem level 1. That's what I've been doing. It means that it's a lot faster to farm these guys. You don't need to farm for better modifiers, which could be a pain in the ass. You could just do that instead. Sorry for the big PSA, but I felt that was really important if you wanted to farm unique legendaries going into the future. You don't need to do it on Mayhem 3. It doesn't increase the chances, apparently, in inverted commas. But seeing as I mentioned the Gatling Gun and Mouthpiece, let's go over there first. The Gatling Gun was a world drop, but now for the next week, Mouthpiece will drop a interesting prefix of this. The Gatling Gatling Gun. It reads, watch me crank it, watch me roll, because of course. And it's a fully automatic Jacobs AR. Might I remind you that those were recently buffed in the latest hotfix. And it has an increased fire rate the longer you shoot, with increased crit bonus. The only issue about this weapon is you can't get it in any element. It just comes in normal, which is a shame. The majority of the best weapons in the game are all elemental of sorts, so that's the only downside for this. Is it worth getting? You might as well, I think, at this point. It's a pretty cool weapon. It looks beautiful. The animation of it is amazing. But honestly, there are better assault rifles in the game that you should be using. But it's all personal preference. It's just a nice gun to maybe pick up and put on your wall in Sanctuary. Next up, we head over to Gigamind, who has an increased chance to drop the Nagata, which is a grenade. Much like the Gatling gun, you can only get it in normal. Its red text is belt a loader, and what it basically does is it fires one longbow grenade which teleports to your destination, but the Nagata spawns a circle of multiple longbow grenades that all hit that target. Now, if your target's moving around like in the gameplay, you're going to miss every single one. So it's not amazing. I certainly think there's better grenades, that, again, you should definitely be using, but it is a cool one to pick up. Is it worth farming? for you can wait honestly you're more likely to find it out in the world you may have one already like i did but generally it's not amazing like i said there's just better options that you could be running might be cool to run on the infinite mo's grenade build just might be a bit ridiculous but i wouldn't say that it's necessarily strong right now but all of these you can farm normally just out in the world world drops but if you want to specifically get them you need to go to the bosses that we're talking about here now let's talk about killer vault killer vault isn't a main story boss by any stretch but he does drop a new legendary that's applicable to him. If you haven't done it already, you need to pick up the quest from Moxie, kill Killer Vault, do the quest, and you'll be able to find the boss, not only getting his 9 Vault Legendary, which I would recommend, it's pretty good, but more so that you have an increased chance to get the Brainstormer shotgun for this week only. The Brainstormer is a Hyperion shotgun, which is a good sign because all of the other Hyperion shotguns are really, really good. You have the Conference Call, the Face Puncher, the FIBA and the Butcher, all of which are really good and I would recommend all four of them. So how does the Brainstormer stack up with them? The red text is let's put our heads together and the unique effect that the Brainstormer has is that it shocks nearby enemies, I believe when you crit them or it's just more of a chance. This weapon is really, really good. I would definitely recommend farming Killer Vault in order to get it, especially if you are an Amara player. It's one of Amara's best guns by far, especially if you're going down the Fist of the Elements tree where you can change the element that your weapon has. So you can give it a little fire damage, meaning that it's great for mobbing. You can set it up like that. I'm sure Lazy Data has a lot of good guides on how to use it, but I'd say for Amara, 
especially, it's one of the best shotguns that you can run. The only interesting thing about it though, and it might be a bit of a drawback depending on who you are, is that you can only get it in shock. So you can get it in fire or corrosive, that's the only thing about it. So if you're looking for a really good shock shotgun, this is the one to get, by far. Really good for proving grounds, but if you're looking for a fire or corrosive shotgun, this isn't going to be the one for you. But I would definitely recommend getting this weapon when you have the chance. But do remember you can get it basically anywhere afterwards, so there isn't any rush. Katagawa Ball has an increased chance to drop the Rectifier. The Rectifier is a shield. It's Hyperion as well, and it works in a very similar way to how the Brainstormer Shotgun works. The red text is you conduit, and when your shield health is completely depleted, it shocks nearby enemies like you're seeing on screen. So you can make this crazy shock build. Again, this might work really well for Amara if you put some fire elements on there too. And if you're constantly low health like I am all of the time, because you're just an utter papega, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. It's not one of the best ones, I'd say. I think there's better ones that that you want to build around but the most important thing about this is it's a lot of fun i already had one of these out in the world but i found another one from katagawa ball it's an easy farm it's straightforward if you want to do it if you don't have it but at this point i would say that you've probably got an even better one at this point there's not really a way that you can build around it so to speak but it has a cool unique effect and does a surprising amount of damage too maybe if you pair this with zane with the class mod that depletes his shields when he uses his ability you're going to get a lot of shock damage there too but other than that nothing springs to mind katagawa jr on Atlas doesn't have a specific legendary that he's dropping at the moment, but he does have an increased chance to drop legendary class mods for all of the Vault Hunters. I don't know if this is more of a chance on the Vault Hunter that you're running, but I would definitely recommend farming Katagawa, also Pain and Terror, that has the exact same thing. Which of these should you farm if you want to just get all of the class mods? Depends what you're running, depends what boss you like. I really like the Pain and Terror fight, so I prefer farming that, and I find Katagawa to be quite annoying teleporting around, but like I said, depends on who you're running. If you're running in flak with the sniper, Katagawa makes more sense. It's up to you really. Which legendary class mods would I recommend trying to look out for if you're farming for them? I'll go one for each. Amara the Phase Zerker, red text is I'm always angry, and on action skill, you gain max rush stacks. That's really difficult to say very quickly, but they decay over time. So if you're running that elemental assault kind of build, I would definitely recommend this. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Like I said, I'll recommend Lazy Data to watch some of the crazy builds that he's made around it. For Flak, all of them are fairly decent, but I think Cosmic Stock is the best one. Like a bird from the snare of the Fowler, your hunt skill power is increased by 25%, and you get some pretty good perks there. All of them are fairly good though, it just depends what you want to run. Moe's, it's definitely Blastmaster. Slow and steady wins the arms race. The longer that you go without reloading, the more splash damage that Moe's deals. We went over this fairly recently, it's very strong no matter what build that you want to run. So long as you go without reloading by going down bottomless mags, you increase more splash damage, which is good for Demolition Woman. You can mix and match, but that's the general gist of it. Definitely would recommend if you find it. And for Zane, I'd say the best one all rounder wise is the Executor, which provides extra kill skills, increasing accuracy, handling, crit, status effect damage, and chance. The red text is have a plan to kill everybody that you meet. We went over Moses and Zane's quite recently, so go check out that video if you want a complete breakdown. Class mods are really fun to play with though, so I definitely recommend getting them all, trying to build around them. The Rampager, of course, is the first vault monster thing that you meet, and he drops the Quadomizer usually, but he also now drops Kill of the Wisp. It's a Maliwan shotgun, which recently got buffed, or Maliwan weapons got buffed recently, so the damage that it's done by this is a lot better than it used to be, that's for sure. Some say it can lead you to your fate, and as you've seen on screen, you charge up these electric shocks that do electric damage as they pass by and can also explode and kill the targets on contact. Sometimes it goes through them. I think it needs to hit like the ground or a wall to explode. Not 100% sure it was fairly inconsistent. This is a really good shotgun. Again, it only comes in shock. And because of that, I would say that the Brainstormer is better in that regard. The Kill of the Wisp is a lot of fun to use though and very strong. So if you don't have the Brainstormer shotgun that we went over earlier, in which case go get it because it's really easy to get, it, get the kill of the wisp instead but it's more personal preference if you just want these stupid guns to run with because they're a lot of fun i definitely recommend this one certainly not the best in slot but a nice backup option if you want to use it again works for stuff like amara or any elemental builds it's good to just have a shock weapon handy in case you need to blow down some shields it's very easy to get to the rampage anyway so you know go for it the warden isn't exempt from this list he has an increased chance to drop the echo which is a tog pistol as a psa this recently got nerfed so do bear that in mind you definitely feel it with the echo but it's still a pretty decent weapon don't make me repeat myself it's the red text it's a sticky shot for delayed explosions and it uses two ammo per shot so it can be quite heavy on the ammo usage but really there's not much difference here between an echo and a normal tog pistol you can get it in different elements 
Guards, Normal Fire, Shock, and Cryo, which is fairly good. But there's better pistols, there's better Torg weapons. You don't get the benefit of having sticky shots, even though it does exactly that. So it might be just a little bit better than some of the other Torg pistols. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. The Warden as well can be a bit of a pain in the ass to get to. Genevieve has an increased chance to drop the 10 Gallon, which is a TDR SMG. And TDR Legendaries, for the most part, aren't amazing. They're like meh, they're fine, they're pretty fun, but like they're not very impactful. This one, I adore. I love this weapon so much. Not only is it beautiful, it reminds me of the Huckleberry in Destiny 2, but also when you're finished using it, when you throw it in the air, it becomes a drone. Let me tell you about my best friend is the red text, and it does a surprising good amount of damage whilst it's in its drone form. If you throw any more in the air, you don't get multiple drones. Instead, the ammo in the one that you just threw goes to the drone to reload it, meaning that if you constantly reload in, you're keeping that drone almost 100% of the time. It's a bit gimmicky, but it comes in all of the elements, which is great. If you want a nice little corrosive weapon to sort of run around with you, that's great as an option if you want it. I really enjoyed using this though. I wouldn't necessarily say it was the most impactful, the strongest SMG that you can get out there. In fact, I wouldn't say it's anywhere close, but it was a lot of fun to play. Genevieve isn't a hard farm and I got it fairly quickly too. So I would definitely recommend this if you want to go to the Voracious Canopy in order to get it. But if you're looking for the best of the best weapons, this isn't one. It's just worth picking up if you want something fun to mess around with. Now we get onto the brand new legendary that was added into this event or at least it wasn't available beforehand i believe it's hard to tell when this legendary went live but we are here talking about the creeping death which drops from aurelia this is a tdo shotgun like i mentioned around the 10 gallon tdo legendaries aren't great and unfortunately this might be one of the worst ones now i said that about the tsunami last time and a lot of you said actually ryan the tsunami is really good what the hell are you talking about so i may be wrong but from playing with it i really didn't like it for a multiple amount of reasons the red text is I creep across the land and when you fire it puts down these sort of corrosive blobs on the ground which do explode and do damage to enemies when you hit them but they sit on the ground until you reload and wherever you throw your gun it becomes a homing grenade where those corrosive blobs now go. Now this sounds really cool. It's a really interesting legendary, but it's just not very strong. I think it might have come in a bit undertuned. The damage that it does isn't an awful lot, but not only that, it uses a huge amount of ammo. I completely go empty when playing in this first area that I have to go back and get some more. So it absolutely pisses through your ammo, so you really need to be careful, but it just doesn't provide enough that it's actually useful. Like I said, there's better shotgun options in the game that absolutely dwarf the creeping death. So whilst it's brand new and quite exciting and has an interesting play style, I think Gibbon might need to buff this at some point. It's just coming a little bit weak, kind of like the Maggie at this point, but who knows, I may be using it completely wrong. Now we go to the Grave Ward, who of course is a farming boss favourite at this point, and he drops the Airworm. Now I spoke to a lot of people about this when I was streaming on Twitch, and a lot of people were saying, I farmed this for like two hours and I couldn't find it. Where is this legendary? Where's it dropping? And that's kind of the thing. This one isn't a legendary, it's a blue unique. And in the past, I haven't gone over just any unique weapons because they tend to be far behind the legendaries, but this one we really need to go over. I'm just going to play a clip of it. The red text is the deadliest summer hit, and yeah, it plays guitar rifts whilst you're shooting. It doesn't do an awful lot of damage, it's a dull assault rifle, so it isn't as useful as some of the other ARs in the game. But I mean, how could you not use this? How could you not want this? This is a definite go grab it before it disappears again, because this weapon is hilarious to use. It's very similar to the Jacob shotgun the Hellwalker, very doom centric. But I mean, come on, how could you say no to a gun that plays this? It has two fire rates, but don't change it, honestly. It sounds a lot better when it's in full auto. But yeah, so much fun to use. Would definitely recommend farming it. But don't look out for a legendary. It's a blue. You just got to keep checking them if you want to get it. We went over Pain and Terror. They have an increased chance to get legendary class mods. But now we go of Detroit, who has an increased chance to drop the Nova Burner. Feel the burn. This is a really interesting perk. You do a explosive fire nova on depletion of your shield, but also when it hits max capacity. And this nova damage, from what I've seen, is very, very good. You've seen it on screen, I just one shot people doing a lot of damage. So I'm trying to show it off, I do get down to quite a lot, but it is one of those things that if you're very high fidelity and you can make use of this, again with certain artifacts and class mods and the general playstyle, you can do a lot of damage if you're playing some sort of melee build, maybe as a Maurer perhaps. You can do a huge amount of Nova damage by just losing your shield and gaining it back. So there's a lot of stuff that I think that you can really make work there, if that's how you really want to play it. Don't know if there's much more synergy than that, don't really know if it's that good in a grand scheme of things and more often than not you'll have this one already just because it was a world drop beforehand i had two before i checked so but if you want it go to troy calypso again 
fairly straightforward farm. And finally, we get onto Tyrene, who has an increased chance to drop the bitch. Nice. Nice gearbox. This is a Hyperion SMG. It's sharing a spot with a Crossroad, which is also another great SMG. It comes in any element. It's red text is if you can't handle me at my worst, much like the majority of Facebook statuses I see at the moment from single boomers. But it's a very strong weapon. It doesn't have any interesting perks. It's just high accuracy because it's Hyperion. It fires a lot. It does a decent amount of damage. There's other really good SMGs out there. The Hellfire, the Nighthawking, which is probably the best in slot, the Nine Volt, the Tsunami now, the 10 Gallon. But this is definitely Definitely one that you might want to get if you don't have any of the weapons that I just mentioned. But also, like I said, they come in all different elements. You might want to pick this up in a shock one or a cryo one like I've had in the past. This is the best time to farm a good bitch if you want one. And it comes in all shapes and sizes, meaning that you have a bitch for every single situation. But yeah, bitch is good. Go get a bitch. And what better way to get a bitch from Tyrant Calypso? In the grand scheme of things, a lot of these legendaries that we went over aren't amazing. There's no really standout ones other than maybe the bitch and the brainstormer. There's some really fun ones, the 10 gallon and the earworm as we went over and of course the majority of people are probably going to be farming pain and terror and katagawa for those legendary class mods thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you would like me to go through all of the rare mobs or if you want me to go through each of the legendaries found on promethea on eden 6 and pandora separately do let me know in the comments i'm not really sure how to break it down but we have a lot of farmable legendaries left in the game that i haven't got yet that i haven't spoken about i can't wait to get stuck in let me know in the comments because i really want to do those videos i just have no idea how I want to do them. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for the support on the channel. It's been crazy since launch. You guys are the best. Take care. See you soon.